And we are live. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Let me put my mic on. Test, test, one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Uh, double check and make sure that mic is going through. Test, test, test. Yep, mic is working. All right. screens thing is up all right let's get started first off i would like to welcome everyone to atlanta dj zone tech tuesday live podcast that i created for djs and the information by djs so um tonight's topic is the second part of maybe probably up to a five maybe a six part topic on serato dj which is the most well-known uh dj uh dbs out there now with a couple of others that are approaching which i'm not going to mention that are okay but serato is my favorite and um loyal to Serato. So this is what I'm going to talk about tonight. Maybe I will do the other DBS later on. But right now, this is about Serato. Now, if you haven't caught the first section, if you haven't caught step one, then you need to go back to this video and see what you missed because there may be something in that video that you missed before you get to this one now the first video was on serato or pre serato preparation which is everything before you get the hardware before you get the program deciding on if your computer specs fit deciding on which hardware controller or mixer that you wanted um you know having it registered going to serato.com getting your uh getting your account set up and lastly installing your drivers and your firmware for your for your uh whatever your hardware is now at this point right here this is this is where you have your controller or your mixer picked out and you've connected it You've installed the firmware for the controller. You install it, the, install the drivers for the controller and the program to meet. Now you have Serato that's completely open. The next step is to get your music. Get your music on it. I'm not going to talk about record pools because this is not about the record pools. There's a ton of record pools out there to get your music, but this is the point of where you have some music and you need to put that music onto your hard drive. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. Tonight and it's tonight is going to be shorter than even the last segment because I'm I'm just going to break this down and get into it real quick and get out into it. So there's not a lot of editing to do for this video. So it's going to be real short and quick. If anything, what's going to take the most is me switching back and forth between because I'm going to do it from I'm going to do it from PC and I'm going to do it from Mac. I have a, a MacBook Pro right here that doesn't have any music that probably has. I don't think I've ever used Serato on this. So we're going to we're going to take a step and look at it from both ways. The PC, I've used music, but I don't have a lot. So I'll be able to do it in both areas to where you will be able to understand. So um, 
All right, so let's get started. And like I said again, this right here is music and crates. You know, you set up the organization management, and then if I get a few troubleshooting tips, or I might go and search for some issues. There are some you known issues that people have in this area. Then I will go through and tell you how to resolve those tips and also show you if I can create those. So this part, step two, is on your music and your crates. Part one, it was on everything before you got to the step. Part one was on making sure your computer was right, uh, making sure uh, you you had the right controller or mixer that you wanted to get. And then once getting it, setting up your account with Serato. And then lastly, downloading drivers and firmware to make that hardware work. So right now you got all those steps done and we're moving to the next step, which is actually getting the computer working. So let me go ahead and log on to the Mac so I can make sure that it's, that it's up. And I'm not even for sure. Um, oh, I have not installed Serato onto this computer. Oh, yes, I did. Yes, I do. I already, I already have Serato on here. Um, I got to go to my browser. In order for you to screen, see the screen, I have to uh, pull it up. So it will be like a screen share. So right now I'm opening up a browser so I can bring what you see on this screen to your screen. All right, now, so, like I said, the first step, this is, this is gonna be the first step. The first step is create, that's supposed to be create, not create it. I don't know where that D came from. So let's make a, all right, create music folders and crates. That's the first step that you have to do in this category, because if you don't do that, then you don't have any music. Now there's two ways, there's two ways to, to do this. You can either, uh, once you download your music, you can either push it directly over into Serato and then start organizing, create your crates then, and then start organizing it. Or you could do another method, which is a lot easier. Prior to you starting Serato, you go ahead and you put all your music in folders and you name your folders for the crates that you're going to be creating. In that way, it's easier to organize once you download it. Because once you download it, you download it into maybe a general folder and you take maybe this track. Oh, it, go, it goes in this folder. This one goes in this folder, this folder, and so forth. You start to sub organize all your music. So then once you create your crates, everything is where it is because you're creating your crates based on what your folders are now or you could do the simplest method and if you don't have anything in crates you just take everything and transfer it over to serato and then at that point you create the crates in serato and you just copy it you just transfer everything over now in that case, you have all your music that's in one location. Now, let me tell you the thing with Serato. With Serato, when you move a track, it's hard for it to find it. Serato tries to find that track in the exact same place that you told it that it will be. So if you move a track from a specific location, like, say for instance, if you go with the easy method, copy all your tracks over to Serato. They're in one folder that could be labeled music. And then let's say later on, you create a folder that you want to put that track in. 
once you put that, once you move that track over to that folder, and then the next time you load up and try to look for that track, it will give you an indicator. And I will show that indicator later. Uh, probably maybe once we could probably in somewhere between this as for uh, what happens when you move a track and Serato can't find it. And then also going to show you how to find it. We'll probably end up doing it into the troubleshoot steps. So uh, make sure that you stick around for that. All right, let me go ahead and get this up. And I'm going to start. I'm going to start with the Mac first, since I just about have that ready. And I need my Ethernet cable so I can have a faster connection. Now, the music I'm going to be using, like I say, I don't have or I shouldn't have any music on this MacBook. And this is a this is a it's an old MacBook, but I like older MacBooks anyway versus newer ones. So uh, they work pretty good because I can do a lot of custom upgrades on it. So right here I have a, a 2010. I also have a 2011 15 inch and a 2009 13 inch. But I'm going to work with the 2010 because it's the newest one and I don't have that much on it, which that's the way I want to start out. I want to start out to where I'm almost at a clean slate. So this one, I don't even think I've done anything with this one as for DJing. So this this one will probably work out perfect. So let's see. Got to wait for it to come up. I don't need camera for this one because I'm going to be mostly using it and I need the mic too. Test. 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 Okay, turn the volume down. Testing. Testing. You did. All right. So now uh, let me know if y'all can still hear me. I, I, I want to make sure I don't have any feedback. I've muted muted the mic and the camera for this one because I'm not going to be using it for that. I'm going to be using it for share screen only. So you'll be able to see what I do on this screen. So, yeah, I want to do entire screen. And I want to minimize. My browser. All right, so I got Serato open already. Let me go ahead and shut it down. And as for my music, my music is going to be coming from this drive. This is a one terabyte Seagate drive uh, expansion. Portable, I don't know what the part number is. 1D6 AP65. But it's actually it's a one terabyte, a one terabyte hard drive. And uh, this is just one of my backups. And let me mention this. If I don't say it enough times and I'm going to say it again, due to the amount of people that have had issues within the past week. Backups, backups, backups. Get a backup, then get a backup for that backup, and then keep a backup for that backup. So have if you have a primary drive that you use, that you have your music on, <coughs> excuse me, 
if you have a, a primary drive, whether it's internal or external, have a backup for it that you keep on you whenever you out spinning. And then for that, maybe have a backup in the car in case something happens to that. And then also have one or two backups at home. And if even possible, have a backup at your mother's house. So, you know, try to have as many backups as you can, because out of everything that you can lose, losing your data will hurt you. It can be the worst. You can you can lose the laptop. Unless you got the music on the laptop, you can if you're using an external. And if you use the laptop, cool. The laptop can be replaced. Insurance could possibly replace that. A client may replace that under contract if the contract is worded right. You can probably get that back. This, you cannot get that back. Now, if by chance, I just happened to, oh, 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 and I did drop it. Didn't try to, but. You did like what I just did. You drop your hard drive and it no longer works. It costs a lot of money to do data recovery on these. In some cases, they can't recover everything. You may have several hundreds, maybe thousands of bytes, megabytes, gigabytes that's destroyed. And it can it can wreck it. Excuse me. It can wreck everything. Everything across one track because the drives do not record. They do not record in a sequential order. They record at random. Wherever the heads are, that's where they write. And that's why writing is a lot quicker than reading, because reading has to go and find those same areas where it wrote to. So um, losing this is very important. Backups, backups. That's why I got to say about that, backups. All right, so there we go. We have, um, we have shut down Serato and I'm about to do a screen share so you guys can see. All right, there we go. So right now we're at we're at the the main page. Moving over so I can be able to reach the keys. All right, now this laptop has been basically clean. As you can see, there's not much on it. If you look down here at my bar, there's not much on it. The only thing I installed is Serato, OBS, and Brave, which is a good browser to use versus Firefox, Edge, and and uh, Chrome. So I use Brave on this one. Let me go ahead and we're gonna open up Serato. I'm not for sure which one I have. I think I have the newest one that I need to have, which should be 2. 2.4.3. I think it's loading. I can close this. And the operating system that I'm running, I think I'm running um I think I'm running High Sierra. Now, another thing that I can tell you about Max while I'm waiting for it to load up, keep your desktop free. As you can see, I only had like maybe three or four, about four or five things on there, which I'm going to end up deleting them because uh, I haven't used this one in a while, but I'm going to end up deleting them because you don't need a lot of that stuff on your desktop. It actually makes it run slower. So keep your desktop clean. All right. Now I'm in Serato and it looks like I did. Yep. Okay. I downloaded some stuff on here to do a trial, but guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to well, I'm going to leave it. I got more music because once I plug this drive in, it's going to start. 
it's either going to it's going to start detecting because I already have music on here, but I'm also going to show you how to add music that's not on here. So that's what I need to do now. Before you get ready to start this, you need to make sure that there's nothing in the USB port, your controller, your mixer, whatever is not is not connected. You need to see this screen that's up here. You need to see this. If you see your control decks, then you got something that's connected, whether it be a SL box, a mixer or uh, or a controller. So un disconnected because at this point you don't need your hardware connected and i think for the the whole duration of this you may not need your hardware connected so make sure that it's not connected so i'm gonna go ahead and plug my drive in now and like i said this is a drive that i use on like all my macs all my windows uh desktops or laptops i have a uh, uh, my asus right here and my desktop, which what I'm using right now for the streaming. So let's see. Right now, it says if you look in the bottom right here, it says loading. Let me hide this. It's loading the database. So it's searching. It's searching my Serato folders or my Serato underscore folder, which I'll show you later. That's used to detect a lot of information about your uh, about your crates about your your data your music and so forth it's not actually where your music is stored but it's actually the associated files that it used in order to do that so um i'm waiting for waiting for that to finish while i'm finishing i see i got a comment let me see what's going on all right, let's see. Let me start from the top. Let's see who's out there. Uh, and I do need glasses. Okay, thanks, Eric. Eric, my main man, Eric Prince, is in. Uh, let's see who else. C Dog, what's up, C Dog? What's up, Carlton? Uh, and. Got somebody new. Let's see. I'm not familiar with this name. Chris. Chris Disc. All right. Let me maximize my screen a little bit so I can see because it's really far away. And my screen is supposed to be getting bigger. All right. Yep, I dropped the hard drive. Oh, well, let me tell you this. SSDs will go bad too now. You can drop an SSD just because just because um these right here. And let me zoom back out for a minute while I'm still waiting for that to come up. All right. Now, and you you're talking about these can go bad. Yep, these can go bad with the drop because they have moving parts in them. You have uh you have uh whirling motors or you have motors and you have heads that are controlled by a motor that's moving and it's all magnetic. Yeah, these will go bad first. These can go bad too if dropped. Yep, they can. This is a mostly all the drives that I have, except for the external, and and I got more stuff falling. Let me make sure it's not more. Okay, that was remote control. SSD and SSD. This one goes into a desktop, so um, they can go bad too. You can drop those, and they will go bad too. And I'm hoping that this is not. Let me see something. Nope, it's not bad. It's good. 
It's just taking long to load up the database, which it probably won't load because, uh, like I said, I don't think I ever used this drive or I ever used the drive with this one. When I set this one up and I played around with it, I just added a few tracks on here from, um, I think, a flash drive or something. Uh, let's see. Two is one and one is none. Yep, that's about right. All right, he said it'll be right back. So, waiting for that to load, and I may have used the wrong port, and it's still loading. Reason it's still loading is because, like I said, I've never used this drive with this. So, it may be. It may be loading up, it may not be loading up, but you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just skip it. We're gonna, we're gonna just unplug it. Or better yet, let me plug it into a different drive. But with, with the Mac, there's two ways. And I gotta wait for I probably should have left it disconnected the whole time because now it's it's frozen because I pulled it off from that drive. I'm trying to remember how much RAM did I have on here. All right, let me take a quick sip real quick. All right, there we go. And it loaded as soon as I as soon as I disconnected. These are I think these are all the crates. I'm not for sure. Um, I'm going to plug it back in and see what happens from there. But here is the two methods that you can do. And these are these are the methods. I'm going with the methods that's listed by Serato because I did the second one was the method that I did. And that was back with Scratch Live. That was uh, that was taught during that method. But here is the methods that that you want to use. So let's go back to that screen. And actually, let's go to full screen. All right, here's my crates right here. Now, like I said, I got stuff here. I can actually wipe everything clean. And we may want to do that. Uh, so let's pull up. Because here is where Serato suggests to pull you, put your music. And this is if you're not going to create crates. If you're the type person, you're not going to create crates or folders and you just want nothing listed here. Nothing listed on this side. And I guess, well, I'll do it in a minute. I'm going to explain or once once I start creating uh, crates, I'm going to explain what everything you see on the screen and how it works. So this is the location that I had my um that I have my downloads. Uh where where did I want to go? All right, this is my music folder. This is my external drive. All right, and it's still working. Now, here these are the two folders that Serato creates whenever you um, whenever you create a crate or whenever you do anything in it. At the end, when you shut down, when you hit escape or if you quit to go out the application, you get uh, you get answered. You get a question, a yes or no um, option to choose and make sure that you choose backup because whatever you've done, um, at that point it is saved. So make sure you back up and then click yes, unless you don't want it saved. And everything is usually saved to this folder, this folder, and then you have a backup folder. So let's, let's
let's venture into that folder for a second. And this is the stuff that's that's usually saved. And like I said, I haven't really saved anything on here. I think everything there may be stuff in sub crates. And yep, here are my sub crates because whenever you create all these on my sub crates as you can see there is disco where is it disco should be right here uh there's a crunk crate and this is not an alphabetical order but it is here somewhere go go all these are crates that i have And so whenever you create a crate, that's where the stuff go, including videos. So all your your metadata information is stored here to where your crates are created. So if I was to transfer the music over to this hard drive, to the hard drive on this laptop, then I will also need to copy my crates. If I don't copy my crates, it won't load up right. And that's the problem that that people have is that they don't transfer the crates and they move stuff out of one one folder and put it into another without telling Serato that has been moved. Usually in Serato, if you put something in a specific crate, if you put it in the right crate, you should never have to move it outside of Serato, like right here, I would not, if I move a track out of any of these folders, Serato won't be able to find it because it says, okay, this track was in this folder. You've moved it. I can't find it. And in order to find it, there's an option that you have to choose, which I get to that later as well, that you need to click on and tell Serato to search for tracks that are not in there their uh predestination location so that's what um that's what you want to do there so where was i going with this uh oh yeah i wanted to go wanted to go where is the folder now i wanted to go into my main which is eh, what I, how do i name that OK, performance. That's right. I didn't do a dual partition on this one. I want to go to a performance, which is my main drive. want to go to library. Then once I go to library, I want to find music. I think it's music. Uh, I thought it was music. It's not music. Uh, is it audio? Nope, not audio. Um. Let me make sure I went into the right location. Wait, 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 wait. Did it begin with an S? Users. What was the file location I needed to go to? And I think I'm in the wrong location. Let's see. Should have been no, not library. Should have went to users. That's what it was. Where's users? Need to go back. Need to go out of library. So it wasn't library. That's what I want. Should have went to users. So you go to your 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 main drive. Then you go to users. All right, here we go. And then you go to your username, which on this one, I'm the kid. And then from here, you go to music. You would do the same thing with Windows. I'll show you how to do Windows after this. And right here, you see that there is nothing. I don't have that Serato folder, which let's go back. Let's open up another tab and look at that. This right here, this is on my internal drive. 
this is on my external drive. Now, if I was to by chance want to transfer everything from my external over to my internal, if anything, I will have to make sure that I have these two folders, the original and the backup before any of the folders of the music was copied over. And actually, the music on here, the, the folders, the, under, the, the uh, data folders are more updated than the actual music because all this is not on my, um, on this external, I don't think. Let's see. Because if it is, nope, a lot of it is. I just got it in subfolders. All right, nope. Do not want to update. So, like I said, this is a backup. This is the backup drive that I have backup music to. So that's where you needed to go. Here is where you want to create your music folder. So I'm just going to create a folder here. And let's call it Serato Music. Now, anything I copy here is what Serato is going to use. So now let's find this program in Serato. So now I'm in Serato. You don't have no hardware connected, but you want to be able to add your files. Now with no hardware connected, you have these options right here. You want to go, you want to click on the files. And when you're clicking on files, you're basically navigating you're basically navigating the same as if you did with uh, with Finder or Explorer with uh, with Windows. So, all right, we right there. That is my home folder, and then I'm going into Music, and then uh, wait, nope, wrong, 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 wrong. I need to go into Performance. And then users, the key it because it's I think it's different than uh yep it's different uh, should be different yep this is different this is a different the key it this is not the one that I just created but anyway you go into your whatever your home library is or whatever your main drive or partition, partition, I guess that's what I want to say. And then you go into users and then your, whatever your home folder name is, and then you go into music and boom. That's where, that's where, um, that's where you put your music. And this is after, this is after you in, uh, after you've downloaded a couple tracks. And let me bring myself up on screen for a second. This is after you download a couple tracks after you get a couple tracks and let's go ahead and um, let me go ahead and copy something over. Let me copy something that's not listed here. Acapellas is there. Uh, this is a junk. OK, let's go because I should have. And the thing you want to do, you want to make sure all your drives are the same. And that's the problem that I have right here. I've updated one drive, but I haven't updated the rest of them. So the backup hasn't been updated. The drive that I, the, the external drive or the internal drive that I use has more, uh, more data and more music than this drive. So I have to, and that's when you have backups, you need to make sure everything is cloned. So that's what I have to do. I need to go later and back up this. Uh, let's go right here, new music. 
and I think I got something. Like I said, this is a backup drive, so it's not going to have everything. Let's see, pre prep. Uh, let's see, kid songs. All right. All right, let's go with this right here, kid songs. And what I'm just going to do now, and this is where you start it. All right, now the kid songs, I'm just going to take all three folders. Matter of fact, I can go back and do. All right, let me do this because this folder has music in it that's probably not going to show up. So I'm going to take my favorite track out of here. If I end up playing it, it won't it won't show up in um let's see where is it? Uh Where is that track? Da -da -da -da. Turn. Oh, that's not it. There it is. Top Ramen. So I'm going to take this track and I'm going to copy it into my Serato folder. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do one track to show you where it ends up. And then I'm going to do that whole folder as a crate. And I'm going to show you how to create it as a crate. So right now, that fold, that track should be in that. And I'm not for sure it copied over. Nope, I didn't copy it. Let's try it this way. Copy it like this. All right, so right now it should be there. And there it is. If I load it, And there's still a lot of stuff that I haven't done to it. I haven't analyzed it yet, which is what I have to do uh, next step. Ne next, after you put, put your music in, you got your folders and stuff, then you need to analyze it. So let's see. All right, so... so yeah, there we go. So my music is loaded and it's there. Now, in order to get it over to my crate section, because once you have it here, doesn't mean that it's in crates. You just put it into a general location. You put it into a general location to where you can find it locally on the drive. It's still not in the folders yet or it's still not in the crate section yet it's not on the right side at that point this is what you do once you get up oh, and i went back hold on um all right all right so rattle music so at that point and see where i have it loaded up it's loaded up out of this folder so i want to remove it i'm going to remove it from from play and it even wrote some tag information on it but what i want to do now and this is what you do with all your tracks you just you just copy and drop and boom it's in serato so then when and i'm gonna close this file for a section second and i'm gonna do a search
So I got to take it out of that folder. So let me go back. I go to all and right now I'm searching for it. So. All right, still need to go right there all. So it can search the whole database, which which only is the couple tracks that I have on here already when I started, plus that one. So um, top. And see all these that are yellow are tracks that I don't have on this drive that Serato is saying, hey, I don't see these tracks. And the reason why is because I haven't I haven't updated the music on the drive to match what I have on the other drive because my other drive is a uh, two terabyte. So I think that one is full. That one is probably full and I didn't have enough, but I do keep stuff back up on it. So as you can see right here, a lot of these are missing because I didn't have the space for it. And it's reading from that two terabyte. So, um, and I probably should never use top alone. Type in the full artist name and boom, there it is right there. And I don't know how to make this larger, but I do know how to make this larger. So, Full screen right here. Here's the track I've loaded. And just to make sure I'm going to click on the little triangle over here in the corner and I can select various criteria to bring columns to make columns. And I want to do location. Or file name. Uh, location. All right, I did location and I'm going to go over to lo where location is and let me move it so we can see it. All right, so location. This is my location. The location that is found is volumes, performance, user, the kid, music, and then Serato music, exactly where I saved it. Now, this is the, the simplest way. The, the, the pro with this is you can move as many tracks as you can copy and paste to this at one time. The con is when you decide you want to organize it, when you want to, when you don't want to have like a hundred thousand or tens of thousands of tracks. And let me change my view back over. When you don't want to have tens of thousands of tracks in one folder, but you want to have it categorized to where they're in separate folders and it's more organized based on the genre, the artist, the album, whatever information that you categorize your stuff by, then that makes it harder because when you move it out of that original location, Serato can't find it the next time. That's just like somebody uh, picking up your keys. You usually leave your keys on a table in the foyer or you leave it on a coffee table. You leave it somewhere where you know where it's going to be. But somebody picks up the keys and maybe leaves it on your nightstand. So where you're used to picking up your keys, it's not there anymore. So when you get ready to find your keys, where are my keys? Who moved my keys? I put them on your nightstand. Why? So that is that is the, the situation that Serato goes through here. You basically taking stuff and you're moving it where it shouldn't be because it's used to finding it in that location. Now, in the case that you do something like that, you have to go through and you're going back to files. And you are doing relocate lost volume, lost files, this selection right here. And what you maybe want to do, what you may want to do is like um, you basically want to highlight all of them because when you do get that. And let's find it. 
this first column and I go through that in a second. Let me let me do let me do this second step. Let me do the second method. That was the first method. That was the first method is to um, is to just put stuff in the general crate or with no crate where it will be able to find it. That's if you're a person that don't like crates and there are things that you can do to where you can create crates, but leave it in that same folder. And that's called um, smart folders or smart crates. That's what they're called. Smart crates. You could do smart crates to where you could put every song in one folder. And then just create smart crates and smart crates will do a search based on how you search for it in order to find it. And I'll do that later. That will probably be the best method that I would tell you to use if you don't want to use the standard crates that are in the orange here. If you don't want to use the standard crates or the orange crates, you have this little blue box option right here that's called smart crates. And maybe when if I get time, I'll explain that. Uh, probably in the troubleshoot or maybe later on. But let me show you the second step. The second step is to do this. And we're going to do it because it's already created. And that is to take a folder that I already have, which I want to take this folder. And what I'm going to do, where what I did with the last one, I um I just took the one track and I dropped it into all files or all crates or all where basically it just categorized in that folder. Anything I put on all is going to go into all. There's going to be no no crates, no sub crates or anything created for it. It's just everything in one folder. But now what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy and I think I have to be. I may have to do it. This way. All right, so I'm going to copy this whole folder. Over into the Serato music. And OK, that's going to take less than a minute. Let me get another sip real quick. All right, so I think that was about 50 to 100. I'm not for sure how many um, how many tracks was in that folder, but let me check anyway. Uh, nope, don't want to do that. OK, that's 100 items that's listed at 100. All right. Now, what I want to do now. And then I can also change the name. This this is probably the best method to use when creating the crate. Use this method and you won't have any issues because you can you can probably you can rename a, you can rename a folder. Uh, you can put in subfolders. You'll be able to categorize. And how I'm doing it now, I'm creating my crates to match what my folder is. So just like uh, just like you see on the drive, like right here, all these were once folders. I created everything using a folder. I match up folder and crate. That makes it easier to put stuff in and to find stuff. So that would be my best method that I would I would uh, recommend to use. If you have a different method than the two methods that I'm specifying, shoot it at me. I'm always up to learning new stuff. So um, this is the second method. The second method is to. Once you have uh, that, let me go back and there is my folder. 
Now, what I'm going to do at this point, since I don't have this folder here, I'm going to drag this folder, which has all this music, and I'm just going to drop it down here at the bottom. And boom, it created a crate just like that. So if you have a folder full of folders that you want to make your crates, copy all the mugs and then just copy them and drop them over and if and as you can see it made a crate just like that some people don't get that it's just that easy and so look there are all my songs i'm gonna close the file so you can see everything but here's all my songs inside that crate and that's it crate created it's as simple as that you're either doing it to where the, the two methods number one you're either doing it to where you're dropping something from a location from a hard drive external drive or whatever and also to, to make note you're doing this i'm doing this from an external drive um i think yep i'm doing this from external drive so when i disconnect that external drive serato would no longer find that because that song was on that external drive that's why you want to clone your drive you want to clone your drive or have stuff localized have it locally saved on your laptop and there are methods if i have time at the end for that i can explain why you want to do that is as for you know having it on external i don't use externals a whole lot usually everything i have except well my desktop right now is not set for a local drive that has music on it so i use the externals for that but mostly everything all my mobile stuff is internal is internal well maybe except for the asus it has one terabyte, but everything else is internal because it has two drives in it. It has a main drive and it has a drive for music only, which is either one terabyte or two terabyte. So that's that's the best method I can say. Use number two. And so when you plug that drive back in, it's going to find everything where it is. So now what I want to do now, I don't like the way that the that is um that is labeled i i want it in lowercase so i'm gonna double click on it and and i'll call it the full thing return of the dj and it's still the same folder is still associated with the same folder. If I go over to the right side and go to my location, this is where it's found. Now, in the event that you have folders or uh, if you have files that you can't find that you may have moved and you'd be like, oh, shoot, I think I did move that. I don't know where it is. What you want to do is find it. Uh, find out where it is locally. Go to either through Finder or through uh, or Explore, depending on which operating system that you use. Also, use the search in Serato to see if it can find it. And then you want to go to the files and relocate files. And see, like I clicked on it there, it's going to search for files. But there's nothing to search for because I don't have that much music on there. The 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 thing that I have is my crates is for larger crates than what's on this drive. This drive I only copied one crate or one folder over to it. The ROT DJ that was the only one plus the one song that was in it to use for example. So it's there twice, but it's not really. It's not really there twice, but it's 
I used it for two different methods. I used it with the individual and I used it with a group as a folder or a crate. So like I said, those are the two methods. Pick one, use it. All right. So this wraps up. Um, yep. This is going to wrap up that section. Uh, everything about the the panels and stuff, uh, I haven't went through and explained everything that's there. I'm going to do that in a little bit. I just want to make this one short so it's not that long and um, I can move into the next session. I may just do it during the analyze, which that's the next step. And let's go full screen. All right. Now, after. All right, we've done that crate music folders. Now we're moving on to step two, analyzing crates. Once you have music in your crates, you don't necessarily need to do this, but it's preferred to do this. So everything is within, within the parameters or the specs that Serato use. And also you may have um, a lot of different missing information. Now, what the analyze do in Serato, and let's go back to what the analyze do in Serato. And where can you find analyze? Analyze is once you click, well, we don't need files anymore. You click analyze files. You got different things that you can do. If you click the analyze files button alone, it may, I'm trying to remember, I think it scans whatever is highlighted. Okay, hard drive is working right now, so give me a second. All right, give me another opportunity to take a sip. All right, so I see I got another comment real quick. Let me go ahead and see what's up while I'm waiting. And I don't think that was new. Okay, no, nope, that wasn't new. All right, so we're analyzing crates. And I can't do anything until that closes out. And that's because my drive is working. And I'm wondering, I may have clicked on, I may have clicked on analyze by accident. Like I said, this is a backup. This is a backup laptop. I don't use this one as much. Or I haven't used it. Watch, it's probably going to stop as soon as I disconnect it. But yep, it's reading something. I'm just going to disconnect it. You know what? I don't need it connected because um, I saved everything internally, so I don't need it connected. It's just causing problems, so we'll wait for that to stop because it will stop now since the drive is not connected. Because the music that I saved the return of the DJ is locally saved on the drive. So now I have a little bit more music that's saved on the drive. Which I want that. I don't want the external drive connected anyway, because uh, when I do the analyze process, it's going to be a lot quicker. 
But let me go through, let me go through the steps. And with this one, on this step, okay, they, uh, and it stops soon as I, okay, so these, this is the actual music that I have. Everything else was saved in the Serato folder on the external drive. So let me show you now, because right now that should be, there should be, uh, um, there should be an underscore Serato folder created. And see, there it is. Since I've made changes and actually saved stuff to this drive or in Serato at that time, it created a folder and let's see what it has in it and see it created a database. Um, a lot of these folders are empty, including logs. Logs shouldn't have anything. Well, no, nope, logs does have something in it. And they are date related. So date based on the time that something was done, it created a log of it. And that log is what Serato may want to get in the event that you have a problem. Uh, so don't no, we don't have anything in recording, nothing in MIDI. History should be empty. Serato video. Uh, and I haven't created any smart crates yet. So right now you're seeing smart crates. Um, and I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm gonna explain some more stuff while analyzing crates is working. So Right there, I have that folder created. Now we're re ready to analyze. Let's see how many tracks I got here. Uh, I think this will be over in so much in quick time. So right now, I want to analyze, and a lot of this information is already done. But you see that there's some information that has blanks. Now, what Serato do, does, and there's three different steps. A lot of people don't know what's the three steps that it does in analyzing. So let's go here. And before you choose, before you hit analyze, you want to make sure that you have what you want selected. Select it. So if you don't want the key, which is called a Camelot key, if you don't want that, uncheck that box. If you don't want beat grids and BPMs, uncheck that box. And your BPM range, you can set it. I usually leave mine to none. Some tracks, it will mess up. Some tracks, it won't. Now, the difference is, if you click entire library, it's going to scan the entire library. So you may want to be ready for it. You may want to be ready for a couple of hours, depending on how many tracks you got before it's going to be ready. Or what you can do, you can highlight the amount of tracks that you want to work with. And let's do, let's do a few. Let's go. See, these are missing. These are not even here. All right, and that is not here because it's not on this drive. Okay, that's all, including video, that's all audio only. So let's do, let's do one through five. No, let's do one through 10 because it may be real quick. So I'm gonna highlight one through 10 and I'm gonna drag and drop it right here on analyze. And those are only the tracks that it's going to do. Now, since my um, since my MacBook is a dual core, that means it. Let me make sure I get it right. Two core. Wait. Yeah, two cores, four threads. If that's right, or is that two threads, four cores? Well, whatever. Anyway, it's a dual core, so it's only going to scan two tracks at a time because you're going to put, right, let's see, cores have multiple threads in them, so um, yep, two cores, four threads, but it's only using two, two cores, if I remember that right. 
and I haven't, I don't have my A plus certification yet. So I kind of get that confused when, when I was studying for it. So I think it's threads in the cores, not th th cores in the threads. But anyway, it's only scanning two. Now, if I pull out my, if I scan, if I scan from the desktop, it's going to be a lot more. And I was do that in, oh, I didn't even do, well, the crates, doing the crates on, on the, uh, the PC are about the same as doing them on, um, on Mac. But I may jump back to that in a later and in a while and work from there. But anyway, you got three sections when you're analyzing. The first section is reading the data. It reads all the metadata and the data that you have. That's usually a quick process. Now, the second step that's taking a while right now, and I probably should just did too. This is the one that takes the longest. This right here is where it's gathering all the stuff that you have checked or unchecked. If I were to uncheck key and BPM and beat grid, then that would have been a lot less. So right now is redoing the key. Is recalculating the key, even though I already have it done, is reanalyzing the key, is reanalyzing the BPM, and is creating a beat grid, which in the later episodes you'll find out what the beat grid is when when I get to that part. So right now that's what it's doing, and this takes the most time. With this being a dual core and it's slower than my other laptops, it's gonna take a while. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to jump into some other stuff while that's working. Now, while that's working, let's look over here. Oh, wait a minute. OK, so is reading on this section is creating on this section and on the last section is writing and it only it's only going to write one at a time. So you'll see one flash. And then as the other one finishes, it flashes. You'll never see multiple ones flash because it writes one at a time. It makes sure the data is completely written one at a time. As for the other first two processes, you may have multiple ones that are like stacked. And let me open up. Let me open up the one on this desktop. Where are you, Serato? All right, there you go. So like I said, this is this is gonna be a slow process because this is a slower computer. All right, now let me explain some stuff. Let me explain, let's go over, let's start over here on the left side. And I'm basically explaining everything from where it's analyzing on down. So you'll be able to understand it. Now, and I may need to take this back over to, yeah, let's take this. I need to take this back over to crates. Uh, yeah, let's take this back over to crates. So I'm gonna jump back over to crates for a second cause uh, I'm gonna jump back to the previous steps. Uh, nope, we didn't need to jump that one. This is the one because I need to do um, mention these categories and then I want to do it for um, Windows 2. So we're going to jump back over for a second to crates, music folders, uh, music folders and crates created. So right here on the Mac and this the the Windows the Serato windows for Mac and PC are uh, identical. There's really not much difference other than you got your open and close. Mac is going to be on the left hand side. Windows is going to be on the right hand side. So as for the, the GUI interface, it's going to be about the same. So everything below the analyze this right here. And let's do it and see that right there. 
that first one has finished. This second one is taking a while. And this is going to take a while because these are not ordinary uh, DJ tracks. These are turntablist tracks. So it, it probably would be very difficult trying to create uh, BPMs, accurate BP BPMs, because a lot of the beats were probably a lot of the beats were probably made manually instead of uh, a beat machine or actual drums, instruments or whatever. So let's go to here because you can go to help. And if you click on show tips, anything you hover over, it will tell you what it means, plus any shortcut keys that you can use. So let's go to the first box. This is your make crate box. And what it says, this button creates a new crate at the bottom of your crate list. You can also drag a folder or selection of tracks onto this button to make a crate containing those tracks. So in the event, I could take these tracks and drag them and drop them on top of here and it will create a crate but i don't want to do that so all right that is new crate now this one is very different and a lot of people don't use this um i've used this a whole lot and like i said if you use step one in creating crates then this is this is what you want to use if you're going to keep every track in one folder if you're not going to separate it and keep it in different folders you can create sub crates to replace that and then that way you won't never have anything lost because it's only kept in one folder you don't have to worry about oh well i think i moved it off this drive onto here or i may have moved it into this folder if you moved it out of that folder it it, it will definitely know so this would be the option to use for that step. And it, uh, this is make new smart crate. Smart crates update their contents by using keywords that match with tags in your music library based on rules you define in the smart crate pop up box. Click the apply rule, then select parameters and inclusions, exclusions, criteria from the drop down boxes. Check the match all following rules option to match all the rules you add. If your option is not checked, any track which matches any of these rules will be included in the smart crate. Check library up, check live update to make sure smart crate is kept up to date when making change to your library. So any event that you use, and that last part is probably the one that make a few people Make sure that live update is checked. So if you add any anything else that goes in that criteria when you create it, that it will also be added. Because if you don't create it or if you don't check it, then if you say, for instance, if you have something and the criteria is, say, if it's a keyword. Um, all right. Let's say with what the right here, Billboard Hot 100. If it's not listed as, as Billboard Hot 100, then if it's listed as Billboard Hot 100 and you don't have that checked and it was prior to, it won't find it. Especially if you added it after a certain time, like maybe you shut down and restart it. It won't add it once you restart it because you didn't check it to update. You're going to have it. You're going to have to manually. You may have to recreate that smart crate again or you may have to drag that track back into that smart crate so it'll be able to find it so by making sure you have that check whenever you have anything created with that criteria that's what it's going to find it all right and then you have a simple list and the simple list it just it just changes uh display track information in a text list and then you have an album art list displays album art as a list with the track information text next to the right. And what that does, if you have album art for your tracks, it will put your album art in this column. 
I mean, a lot of people don't really use that because it it takes up a lot of space from your search unless you just have stuff that's specific and you can find it by that album art icon. A lot of people don't use that. Uh, the simple list and let me shut this off for a second. Yeah, and you're just basically toggling between the two. Your average list is the simple list. And if you want it to do album art, then you're going to change it. So that's the difference between those two. Let's go back to show tips and do the actual crates, CD list and playlist column. This area displays your crates, audio CDs, iTunes and streaming libraries. Click all at the top of the area to view your tracks in the library. Click on the plus in the area to make new crates, which we already um, I already explained. Click on crates, drag, drop down in order. A single track can be stored, can be stored in more than one crate. So, yes, you can move stuff around once you have them in crates, as long as you don't move it out of its original location. So, I can take one song that's in this crate and drag it and put it into the crunk crate. And all it does locally is just creating two different locations where that track is found. It's still located in its original position in Return of the DJ, but there's also one that's going to show up when I click on crunk. Uh, let's do. Uh, I'm going to do an example of that in a minute. Let me finish reading it off. Um, let's see. Double click on the crate to rename it. Highlight the crates and press control plus delete to remove it. Note, you must have the protect library option in the setup screen. Untick to edit the file names and allow crate removal. If you accidentally delete a crate, you can retrieve it from the trash bin. To import from iTunes playlist, which I don't use iTunes, so I don't uh, experiment a whole lot in it. But to import your iTunes playlist, go to setup screen, library, display, library plus display tab and tick show in iTunes library. To import your streaming library, go to setup screen, library, display plus display tab and tick on show streaming services. Select a string, select the service and log in. If you put an audio CD into your computer CD ROM, it will appear in this area. The audio tracks will appear to the right in the main library area. To change the order of the track within the crate playlist for your for track within a crate or playlist, first click on the hashtag column or the number column. And then click and drag the track up or down to change the order. You can sort by the column, sort by number to return the customized crate, uh, customized track order. Uh, this is all self exclamatory. I'm not really going to go into it, but yep, that's self exclamatory. All right, now let's go down here to the bottom, the stuff that you see down here in the bottom. Now, autoplay. Autoplay is basically uh, when. Autoplay is enabled, so Rider will automatically load and play the next track available from the current selected crate once the current play tracks in. So basically, whenever you have autoplay on, it continues to play, whether you're using hardware or no hardware. Uh, say, for instance, if you have three mixes that you want to play back to back, and you're not going to be there the whole time. You're not going to be monitoring. You can click auto playlist if you have them in the order in a crate created or a smart crate or um, somewhere in your window where if you have it on, if you have it prepared and in prepared, which I'll mention that in a little bit, that it will play all of them in order until there's nothing else to play. So basically, it's just like. Um, playing a CD without specifying the specific track or uh, repeat or whatever. So basically it plays everything. It doesn't stop at the end of the track. It continues going. 
All right, and what is this? Oh, day mode. This is something new. I haven't really used this. Click the button to turn on day mode, on and off. Day mode is useful when your screen is under bright sunlight. So if you're working outside, you may not be able to see the dark screen as much. And they had a, they actually had a, uh, there used to be a, a hack or a workaround in order to do this in older versions. And then they found out a lot of people needed to see better in the daytime. So they created day daytime mode where when you click on it, it makes, it reverses the colors. Was black is white and was white is black so that you can see it a little bit more in the daytime. Not something you really want to use inside, but it's it's useful for some. It's been requested. And then you got your status bar. Your status bar will tell you a lot of information from the time you load to the time you shut down. Um, like right now, it should be it should be telling me information about my um it's telling me tell me a lot of information about my analyzer. And it says status bar, status bar, keep you informed about what is happening within Serato DJ, excuse me, while you perform. So make sure you, you check, look at your status bar every now and then to see that it's, you know, it's not giving any issues or errors or whatever. All right, let's go because it got something with the build overlays, overviews. And this is the overviews for the analyze. Let me read that off. The bars above analyze files show the analyze process. The first line contains current track being analyzed of a total of a total number of tracks to be analyzed right there. Uh, sequential lines show track names, the number sequential lines sub, subsequent 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 lines show track names the number of tracks you can analyze at once will depend on your processor's core cores your system has so like i said this is a dual core so i can only do two tracks at a time yep and it's all the same for all of them all right, so analyze. All right, uh, analyze files requires analyze file uh, analyze files prepares waveforms overview detect file corruption and if enabled calculates BPM values creates beat grids and detect musical key. Analyzing files in Serato DJ ensures that your songs are ready for you when you need to use them and reduce the CPU loading when DJing. Analyze files can be enabled two ways. Click the button to analyze any unanalyzed tracks in your, in your library or drag either a track, a selection of tracks or a crate onto the button to force analyze. To force Serato DJ to reanalyze all your files in your library. Hold control while clicking on the analyze button. That's something a lot of people don't know. Uh, to force it, to force Serato to reanalyze all your files in the library. Uh, holding the control and then click on the analyze button. All right, no, it says, um, Set beat grid slash BPM would need to be checked for beat grid and BPMs calculated. In addition, set key will be needed to check for musical key to be analyzed. Like I said, that's optional if you want it. If you don't, it won't it won't set it up. It won't do it. All right. Information. The information of the tracks being analyzed will show in the progress bar above the button once the process once you begin the process. Note. Analyzing many files at once may, no, not may, they say may, will take some time. And that's exactly what it does. It takes a whole lot of time. Right now, it's only taking me this long to do 10 tracks because I'm 
only working on a dual chord, which I think this one, and it just finished one. So I may be getting close to all of them finishing by now. Let's see. Um, Two, three, uh, where are we? Five are done, about halfway done. So if if I was doing all of, say if I was doing just all the music on this drive, it would be night night for me. I will put this buddy up, and that's what a lot of you want to do when you start analyzing. Start analyzing before you go to bed. If you got a couple thousand tracks, start analyzing as you go to bed. When you wake up in the morning, most likely it'll probably be dead. And the um, the 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 how long it will take will depend on the computer. Like right now, you see right here, this is a CPU uh, meter, and it's in the red. So this is working hard. I don't know what else is working in the background. I tell you what, let me close the browser out. Uh, nope, can't close the browser because if I close the browser. I close this window, but let me close some tabs because I have a lot of tabs open. So right now, all right, let's see what else I got open. All right, close this. And close that. And let's see if there is any change. And nope, not much. But it's still writing. Uh, let's go to the next step. All right. Uh, I'm not going to go a lot into this, but this is where all your crates, all your your information is listed. What I'm going to say about this is you have a column. You're, you have stuff different and uh, you can arrange your columns however you want to, but you have a column over here on your left side. Your column on your left side tells you what the status is of tracks that you have. So uh, the, if you see a lightning bolt, if you see a lightning bolt on the left side, that indicates that you have a missing track. And usually when you have something that's an issue, it's either white or yellow. And like I said, if you have the if you have the little lightning bolt, that means that it can't find that track. It means that you move that track or that track disappeared from its original location and you need to find it. At that point, you need to go and select the option. Well. I'll tell you when I get to that point, but um, depending on what what you have, if you don't have anything in that column, you good, you good. So you want to have that that column as clean as possible, unless you have uh, if you have videos, it'll show like a like a movie clip icon in there. If you have uh, specific Serato tracks, which that company no longer is around anymore. What was it? Uh, White Label? White Label had an icon that shows up in that column. Uh, what else? Uh, you have question mark. Question mark is, I think it's for stuff that stuff that it can't it can't find. It's it's not the actual tracks, but it's the actual data. And that's what I had when I had the uh, external drive plugged in. Uh, let's see, sorting, let's see, editing, da, 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 da. all right, you can go and look through that. I'm not going to go through all that information. Let me change back. Um, now to arrange, to make the changes from alphabetical order, ascending and descending, if you click like right here where the number right now is in D, D, no, ascending order. So it's going from one to 100 but if i click on it i basically reversed it so it's basically like i went to the bottom and now i'm reading up but i'm reading from the top 
down just as I was before it changed the order. And you can do this with anything. If you do song, alphabetical order, A's right there. If I click it again, it's showing from the last one with the X, 187, blah, blah. It does it for all the categories. And you'll see the little, the little uh, triangle on the right hand side of that box. Also, you can stretch out. You can stretch out each column. You can drag them around and and rearrange them. You can basically just rearrange all this category, you know, how you want it. I usually like my um I like my BPMs and my keys at the front. Uh plays. And also, if you go to the far right, to the very far right of that, you can make changes to what columns that you want. So by clicking on that one there, you uncheck what you don't want. Like I don't want album, uh, I don't want comments, uh, links, location, plays, definitely don't want that. And that gives you more space for the stuff that you need on screen. And I don't necessarily need location because I know where it is. You only want stuff like location and uh, what was it? Location and file name or basically location. If you can't find it, if you get a triangle, well, no, if you get the lightning bolt, let me see if I can find one. There we go. These are tracks that cannot be found. So this whole crate or folder is located somewhere else. It's been moved from where um, where it should be or where it's where its original position is. So if I go to location and try to find out where it's supposed to be located. And let me move it so I can read it. OK, volume storage, music, new music downloads. And see, this is it's searching on the external drive. All that is on the external drive compared to this one is probably. On this actual. This one is probably on the internal drive. So in the issue where you where you have a problem where you can't find. Well, nope, this one is. OK, this one is here, too, but I don't know why. Let's see some. Oh, OK, wait, 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 wait. I think I do have a. I think I do have a music. Yeah, I do have a music on here. It's just that one. Yeah, there it is. Music. Billboard. OK, so this is music that I have on here. And as you can see, a lot of these folders are not. Are not over here where uh, where my crates are, so I can actually make a crate. And I'm going to take this 100 hits and I'm going to make I'm just going to make it into a crate. Boom. There it is. It's a crate. And right here, this is where it scan is location. So in the event that I want to make all these crates. Whether I change the name right here or if I change the name over here, which really I would want to change the, the crate name location, I would change the name prior to moving it. So if I don't like this Crooklyn clan, uh, if I don't like this, this funky beats at the end, then I would edit that out before I change it. So let's see what happens. And this shouldn't make a difference and see it made it right there. But now I like, OK, I don't like that funky beats there. that's taking up too much character space. Uh, right there. 
and that didn't change anything. All the music is there. Everything is there. The only thing is I, I got to analyze it. Look, there's no artist information and it may add that. And especially no BPM. This is clean stuff, stuff that had not been analyzed or anything. So this would definitely need to be analyzed because it doesn't look anything like these. And now the best way, and, and I think I remember right, and as you can see, in order to get all columns the same, because see, I like my columns more like this, but you see that there's a lot of them where everything is like, where's my BPM information? It's missing. Where's this? Where's that? I don't see, I'm missing a lot of stuff. Um, usually what I would do, I would do all I would set up all how I want it. BPM, keys, artist, song, takeout, album, uh, comments, uh, plays. And I would leave location because then if I have anything, and this is showing all and there. There's one that can't be found. Uh, the baby. All right. So, like I said, the drop down box, you can change everything, move columns around, stuff like that. All right. Uh, you know about the files. Your files show your local hard drive and where your music is. You can. You can either copy it from here to create crates or you can copy it from Finder like this and do it that way or whatever, whichever you prefer. Uh, browse is where you just you just browsing, you browsing for information. I don't think people use browse enough because they use search a little bit more. But if you want to browse for like certain things like um, th this is genre if you have that information set if you're looking for something specific then you would go there if you're looking for specific bpms and it's also going to show it in the um uh, in your in your crates column this is everything with the 75 bpms all right that's everything with the 70 this is everything with the 80 so you may have a lot of 93s yep 93 bpm or whatever the same goes for all the other car columns the artists if you're looking for a specific artist like uh that's chris brown but that's only one track um uh, let's see js1 okay can't find that but anyway that's that's browse all right prepare is something that that is real good to use and let me show the tips for prepare. All right, prepare, uh, drag, crack, drag tracks into this area to quickly make a temporary selection. Tracks will automatically be removed from this area after they have been played. You can also drag tracks directly onto the prepare, the prepare button or select one or more tracks and press control P to add them into the prepare list and then it shows the the shortcut so basically this is like a um this is like a well guess what it said what it says it, it's a prepare list or a prepare crate to where you're getting ready you're searching for a certain song say if you're searching looking for a particular song but while you're looking for that song you see another song you be like oh i want to add that one so you highlight it and let me turn this off so I can do it. Oh, I want to do ASAP productions. And then I hit command P and boom, it's added. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm going to play some Babu. Command P. Uh, JS1, which I was just talking about recently, JS1. Uh, let's see who else in Invisible Scratch Pickles. 
So now when I hit command P, while each one was highlighted, I go into the prepare list and boom, there it goes. And then just like it says, as I play each one, it drops out and it gives you more room to add one, add more. Now there's a way that you can get a, um, you can get a, a, a playlist in case that you want to see stuff that you've already played. That will be mentioned later, won't be mentioned, mentioned during this time. I mentioned that at another time. So uh, that's it. And then history. History is well, yeah, that you can go to history because history will tell you what you've played. That is your current playlist. It will tell you what you play at a certain date, what start time and whatever and the play time. And um, as for that, you can do the uh, you can start session in session. I don't really mess with history that much or really use it, but that's where you can get your you can get your playlist and you can export it to certain. I think uh, what you can ex export, you can export it to text C CSV, which is um, Excel. Yep, Excel 3MU, which I'm not familiar with that one. Or Serato playlist format, which uh, I'm not familiar with that one either. But anyway, that is the history, and it shows you all the songs that you play. So when you play a set for the night, and you wanna you wanna create a list. Say if you you making a mix to to sell or distribute, put on your mix cloud, but you wanna have all the tracks that you use. You go into history, and under the date and time that you create it and be able to export that out, import it into a text editor or something, and you will be able to pull it up and add it to the website or wherever it is that you want to add it to. Um, and uh, that is all for that. What else would I need to say? That is everything on that. No hidden stuff. Wait, nope. There it is. OK, with file again, and I, I forgot to mention this and let me turn this off. You have a uh, rescan ID tags and you have relocate lost files. Let's look a little deeper into the rabbit hole as for what they go. Now, rescan ID three tags. Click to force the router DJ to reread all file tags. Use this function if you have edited or modified file tags outside of Serato DJ. Rescanning will also indicate which files cannot be found in Serato DJ. Sort your library by, by status column. Sort your library by status column to group all missing tracks together. You are also able to drop a selection of tracks or crates directly onto this button. If you do not wish to scan, rescan, you are you are also able to to drop a selection of tracks or crates directly onto this button. If you do not wish to rescan your whole library, so that's that's an option. So by the chance, if you happen to to mess around with your with your ID three tags outside of Serato, you want to use this so it can scan it. And this is kind of the same thing like moving the track. If you move a track, Serato doesn't know where to find it. Here, if you change information, Serato doesn't know where to find it. So you basically have to tell it, hey, I've changed this track. Here it is right here. Put it where it's supposed to be. And analyzing is done. So let's go back because I had returned DJ. The first 10, turn this off, um, file, and there it is. With the exception of, and I think these are ones that it probably wasn't going to scan because the beat grid is not going to be on time. Because their turntable is tracks. Let's see, see if that's the one. Yep, 
Yeah, this one has a lot of movie tracks in it. So it's probably not going to have a lot of, um, won't be able to create any beat grids for it. So that was the reason that I don't have this one. This is like, this is like personal music that I listen to. I don't really play this in Serato or mix it because it's, it's already pre-mixed. It's, it's DJs cutting and scratching. So um, you won't be able to create any beat grids from it. And that's what I had with, with uh, a lot of them that was in there. So that was the problem with that one. All right. So real quick, let me take another sip. And I'm going to jump on Windows and do the exact same thing. But I'm going to say less. I'm going to go through it real quick. All right. Everything is done on Mac. So let me drop out of Mac for a second. And now we're about to go to Windows for Windows users. So we're going to close. Yeah, we're not going to close it. We're just going to go back to me full screen until I have it set up. I have my Serato set up now on Windows. And I need to do a shared screen for it. And see, now when I do this for Windows, it's going to go a lot faster because I got multiple cores. And I want to do Serato so it stays there. All right, there we go. As you can see, the, the windows look almost exactly the same. And let me turn this off. Everything else is basically about the same. I do have a few crates here. Some of the songs I have that are about the same. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to connect my external drive. And like I say, like I said in the first video at the very beginning, making sure you have your computer specs right makes a big difference, makes a big difference and you're about to notice the difference now even though i was on a mac that mac is slow as hell very slow as hell and probably i should not be running this version of serato on it but when i optimize it a little bit more it'll be able to 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 run a little bit or maybe if i throttle back on the older version or even just use it for scratch live or whatever then it will be okay. So um, right now, my drive is connected. I tell you what, let me connect this. I have it connected into extension. Let me connect it directly into a port. So it will run a lot better. I think I need a different cable on that one. Let me swap the cables out.
Yep. That was the problem I was having. I should have figured that. I had a problem with that one because this cable is bent in here somewhere. Something's wrong with that cable, so <sighs> might need to toss that one. That was a good cable too. All right, so right now it's loading up my database. All right, let's see what's going on with you guys out there. Nope, nothing different. All right, there it is. And this actually loaded up a lot more music. Well, nope, I think this is all the same. It's just that I don't have to scroll down as much. But these are all the crates that are on that drive. And okay, so that cable. And see, that's why I always say use a well, not really use a good cable, but some of the issues that you can have can be cables by swapping out a cable. Now, without me knowing that I remember that this cable, I don't know if you can see that you can see that that cable is slightly bent. That something like that can cause an issue. And I can even feel a little play in there. I mean, I could probably take some adhesive or something that's just loose inside or, you know, whatever. I could actually take a meter, check it out if I want to keep the cable and still use it. But I got a lot of those cables anyway. I bought a bulk of them. If anybody needs any, let me know. Five dollars each plus shipping. I can I can ship you a couple, even hook you up on some. But anyway, that drive had more on it than. And as you can see, look at that. Almost everything is full. All right. So um, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to navigate to the same steps. The, the first one and the second one on Windows and then just do some analyzing so you can see the difference of analyzing uh, with something that has a multiple core. Cause this one, this one has, um, I think 12 cores or eight, 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 12, I think 12 cores. I can't remember, but anyway, let's go step one, one track. Or, well, no, let's find where you would need to create your folder or where everything is located. So at this point, um, I should have did. Let me close it out. Let me stop. Let me go back and do it by window because I need to do this. Okay, there we go. And you know what? Change it out again. Let me move it to one of my upper screens. Okay, cursor, cursor. All right, can't find my cursor. All 
All right, guys, I lost my cursor. Just saw it. And I think I may be, I think I may be running low on batteries. Let me see. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna use my remote. And back to the screen share. That screen. All right, so now I'm using my remote. I lost my cursor. I think my batteries may be dying out. So all right, so what I'm gonna do now is find the location that your music will need to be. So and of course your computer is gonna be different than mine, but Here's Explorer right here. So I'm going to go to music. And as you can see, I have my Serato folders already here because I have stuff on here. I've saved them or whatever, but that's where it is. These are the two for Serato. So I'm going to create a new folder. Can I do it with this? Nope, I can't. Uh, new folder. Basically, basically what you want to do, you want to save your music in a location where music is supposed to be. You would not save music in downloads. You would not save music to your desktop. You would not even save music, not even music videos to videos. You will end up saving it no matter what it is. If it's video, if it's actual music, even if it's karaoke, save it in your music. Keep everything categorized in one place. So right now, I have my Serato music folder. And now I'm going to files in Serato and I'm searching for it. Now to search for it, uh, should be, yep, it's right here, my music. And it should be at the bottom. There it is right there. Now I don't have anything in it. Let me do exactly as I did with the other one. And I'm gonna search. Let me search for that exact same folder that I used earlier. And I'm trying to remember where it is. Was it new music? Okay, here it is. Okay, drag. Oh, oh, right there. All right, so this is where I have, and I'm gonna do the exact same songs that I did on the other drive because I won't have no issues with Facebook or YouTube or whatever flagging me for it because it's probably not registered, but here is the return of the DJ folder that I had. So I'm going to save that over into my drive on, um, and I'm copying it and it may not copy that way. And let's see if it's there. Nope. So 
Let's do it this way. Music. Uh, no, need to go over. Probably should have did it the other way. Yep, I'm just gonna do it folder for folder. I'm just gonna do it within the folder. So give me a second while I do it that way because that'll be a lot easier. All right, so so I'm doing it this way. I'm doing it internally. So this is the folder that I wanna copy and I wanna copy it to here. So I'm gonna drag and drop it. And there it is, it's being copied over. Move this out of the way. You can see the transfer and everything on this is a lot faster. This, it's not, it's beastly, it's not the beast, but compared to everything that I have, now and and what everybody else have i got the i got the main system in this household so all right so we got everything over and to speed this up this should be my music and there it is plus all the tracks now go ahead and show you drop one and i want to do the same track it was uh top ramen right here and i'm just going to drag it onto the crate nope drag it onto all so i need to do that now it's still in the same location i'm not moving it out of this location i'm just saying hey i want to add this into the crates but put it in all so when i search anywhere for it i can find it and as you can see my information down at the bottom it just updated so it's there if i search for it That I hit enter. Oh, uh, and that's the thing. You got to have it highlighted. See, because I don't have it in a selected crate. I don't have anything highlighted. I didn't highlight anything over here. So. If I don't select either all or all audio, if it's a video, it's not going to find it. So if you do all period, it searches everything, whether it's a video, karaoke, music or whatever. But if you choose one of these, it's going to it's only going to search for whatever you are telling it to search for. So I need to go back because I didn't highlight it. And I miss up. And there it is. And there is my location. Uh, Studio 2A music and Serato music return of the DJ folder. Now we got that done. Now I'm going to do the same thing, except this time I'm going to do the crate since I already have that folder there I go into my Serato music and I want to turn that into a whole crate and I'm trying to widen it out well I, don't, I guess I don't need to worry about that but I want to turn it to the whole crate so I find and I'm gonna try it like this I haven't tried it like this 
I usually just drag and drop it and then put it at the bottom, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna do it like they mentioned a while ago, and I'm just gonna copy it and drop it on top of crate, and it does the same. And as you can see, the information right there is creating everything. Is writing tags. It's not analyzing. It's just writing tags. So now at that point, just that quick, a hundred some tracks, just that quick, it has created the tags. And of course you see, I have a lot of missing information, BPM and so forth. So what I need to do now, and let me make this how I want it, artist BPM, key, length, location. I can take that out, I know where it is. All right, so this is this is how I want everything to be listed. Um, usually artists first. And it's wide enough. Uh, BPMs, everything is, let's see, should be 100 tracks. Okay, good. 100 tracks is there. Uh, these are probably not going to register any BPMs, but I'm going to do, I'm going to do all of them. I'm gonna do the whole thing. So, all right, I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna just drag that whole crate on top. And this is this is gonna go fast, y'all. This is gonna go fast. This is gonna blow your mind. All right, ready? Go. Everything is being analyzed. Now, I have not never I have never analyzed this on this computer before or it hasn't been analyzed, period, because remember, I said that I use this for personal listening. I don't I don't add this because of the fact that it it. um And before I can even finish this, done. OK. See, and it's finishing up the last track, last one. That is awesome. Damn it! I love this computer. I love you. I love you. Oh shit! Whoo! Excitement, man. To and then to do this, and I might end up doing this when when we finish. I might just analyze this whole drive for the hell of it when I end up finishing it for the night because I just love that the way that it just it just goes through and knocks everything out so quickly. And it, it doesn't cause any issues to what I'm doing. I'm streaming right now, son. And it's not hurting anything. Let's just, oh man, I just, let me do my, do I have my discography? Let's see, how many tracks of this? I didn't even get a chance to finish what I was saying. Okay, now this one is gonna be, uh, this is going to be some time. But I'm a the hell I can stop it later. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to start analyzing. Discography. All right. Almost quad sevens. And like I say, the, the first information is reading. First information is reading. The second information is processing. It's doing whatever it needs to do, whether it's BPM, keys, um, ID3, beat grids, whatever that it does, whatever it creates for Serato to run efficiency. Because like I said, it doing this will also, it, it will save you CPU power. As you can see right here, my CPU, I'm probably under half. And like I said, I'm streaming from this computer. I have maybe like, I would probably say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten 10 browsers here. This one, this bundle down here may have about 20, 25. And I'm sure I got, I got OBS open. I got all this stuff running and look at it. It's running like a champ. So with a computer like this, I can do OBS and Serato from the same computer. That's that's what I was telling people. If 
you are streaming, you need to have something as strong as this to work. The, the, the 2000, any of my MacBooks, I would not do one thing from it. I would do, I would DJ from one and stream from the other one and hook them some of bitches together to where it all works however it needs to. But what I'm doing right here, I would not do this on any of these, not even the the i5 um, Asus that has 12. This, let me see, how much did I put in this? This computer has 32 gigs, two sticks of 16. Uh, I'm not even sure if I need any more. I'm still trying to, to, to grasp what it's doing now on 32 gigs. Uh, but I don't even know if I want to go to 64 because that would be my next thing is to just max it out at 64. And I think it can go to 128, but um, I don't have that type of money. So anyway, this is moving. Of course, it's going to take some time. And right now, within that short period of time, it's already done 200. But like I said, the first step, the didn't call you Siri. Anyway, the first step, it reads the information real quick process. The second step takes a lot longer because it it calculates. It does a BPM count. I don't know if it does it in real time, but it does a BPM count. It creates the beat grid and it finds out the uh, the key is for the uh, Camelot, the, the Camelot chart or the, the Camelot scale or whatever it's called. And then at the end, it writes. But it only writes one track at a time, but it's quick. So as you can see, a lot of the tracks are clustered waiting for its turn to be written. But just the fact that it processes everything so quick and it reads it so quick is the thing. The writing process is always going to take the longest. The, the right process is always going to take that just like that, just like you as a human. You can read faster than you can write. You can you can speak, you can process stuff faster than your muscles can move. And so that's the way that that works in that process. Whew. All right. So let me close this out because uh, right now we are finishing that and I need to make sure that I have this marker so I can edit. So this wraps up the analyzing crates and it also. Um, well, no, that's not organized, but it. Um, it wraps up the creating music and folders and also analyzing. Your crates in Windows, which is not much different than Mac other than your uh, where your location of your where your music is located. But each one creates the same files, the exact same files. And here's the thing that you may not know as well. Whenever you're switching and as you can see, I use the same drive on two different computers. In order to do that, your hard drive needs to be a format that can be processed by both. So your your uh, hard drive needs to be at EXFAT. That's E-X-F-A-T. You need to format it in that format before you add any music to it if you're going to be using it on both. So mine is done in EX format. Now, the files for the Serato and the underscore crates are the same. They can be read by both because, as you can see, um, it read one and it partially read on the other one, which it read partially on that one, probably because of the cable. Um, if I hook it back up, I'll probably be able to get everything there. Now, to, to close this out, the two things that you need to remember at the end when you finish analyzing because at the analyzing part you're ready to play if you have everything organized if you created your crates you have all your music there you're ready you're ready to get started everything that i'm mentioning after this is is future 
is future stuff management organization or whatever everybody is going to organize their stuff better so this that process is going to be a little different i'm just going to mention how i do it which is going to be a real quick process so um the things that you want to do you want to go to your settings and then go into trying to remember which one where is it? it's library and make sure that your protect library is checked now whenever you're making whenever you're making any edits whenever you change it like if you change the file name or if you're deleting a track out of a crate or whatever you have to go and uncheck this or it will not allow you to delete it and let me show you for example let me check it back all right so i got it checked i'm going back out and i am for the deleter track so let's go into my return to the DJ's crate. And let's delete this one highlighted. So when I hit delete, look at the status bar at the bottom. It may tell me while um while it's scanning right there. And I edit or delete while protect library is on. Now I'm hitting the delete button and it's not doing anything. I can hit shift and delete it will not do anything control delete not anything you cannot do anything while that's checked but if i go and uncheck it then it will delete uh what else did you need to know out of that is for this so make sure protect library is on once you once you've done editing to make sure you don't accidentally uh delete anything uh what else uh you could have Custom crate columns. Custom crate. Uh, I'm trying to remember what that is. That's going to be in a different step. I can't remember what that one means. That one is probably going to be step four. Because what I'm going to do first, I'm going to go through the next step. Next week is going to be, I'm going to talk about this whole panel up here, your play control. That's going to be discussed. And then the next step is going to be, I'm going to go through all the settings. Talk about all the settings here, including the F, the FX, the F effects. And then uh, after that is going to be features. actually doing stuff with it and maybe at that point i have some people that can that can you know that's use stuff a little bit more than me to come on and explain how that works now this is going to take a while so i'm just going to stop it at this point but as you can see right now it's already at 500 and still pumping out so if i let it go overnight it will definitely it, it'll be done by the time i wake up so um that is it Make sure your protect library is on. And when you exit out, make sure you select yes, because it will save anything you've done at that time. And do make sure backup library on exit, because if you don't do backup library on exit, it won't create the backup here. And this is in case that this goes corrupt. If this file goes corrupt, then you got the backup. And there's no more than than uh, renaming this. You may rename it underscore Serato underscore edit or, you know, anything behind it. So you can always go back to it and you would take the backup and you would take the backup part off to name it what this one is and it will replace that and these are this this is just this is just a clone of each other but if you don't check that if you don't check that backup save on backup it it will not do it so you got to make sure that you do that and i think now i'm going to stay on pc for the rest of it because um this this is my baby. It's a beast. It's a beast. It's a beast. All right. So 
Now, analyzing crates is done. You now have your crates analyzed. You have your music now. You can start playing. You can plug in your controller, plug in your USB, and you can start playing. Now, as for after a while, and let me switch over to the next tile, to the next one. Now, like I said, as you now have your crates organized, you plugged in your hardware, you started playing, everything is working just fine. Everything is working perfectly. And now you're adding more music. As the weeks, the days start to go along, you're going to your record pools or whatever, and you're adding more music. Now, if you're going with the method one to where you're putting you're putting everything into one folder, then I guess you're OK using smart crates or you using whatever other method that works for you, then then you're fine. But if you're using folders, subfolders or whatever, and you have subgenres, you have something that's like, say, for instance, you have a uh, rap. And I'm not going to call it hip hop because it's not hip hop. But anyway, you have rap and you have you have uh, trap, you have um, you, <laughs> trap, mumble rap, whatever, whatever the new generation music is. That's what you call it, rap. And you want to specify everything. You want to categorize everything different. So once you start downloading and this is. This is the suggestion I would suggest to do. For your downloads, have one generalized download folder, the folder that you can find the most. And I'm going to show you this because the same thing is going to apply for Windows 2. I mean, it's going to apply for Mac 2, but I'm using Windows. All right, let's close all these up. No, nope, I won't open them. But let's go here to where you can see oh, storage is full. I got to I got to clear stuff off the drive. But anyway, these are your folders, and you have folders like this similar to Mac. Now, your music folder is where you want to save. You want everything saved to here. That's if you're using an internal drive, which this is an internal external drive, because all these folders are on this hard drive, not this one. That's why this one doesn't have. This one this is why this one has a lot of space. I don't save any data on my main drives. No, not really. If I go through the original folders like these that are on this drive, which they shouldn't be because I relocated them to here, they 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 should be empty. They should be empty. But anyway, I this is where I do all my data, all my storage. All this right here is here. So everything that's downloaded, that's uh, opened by a program, that's created and saved is here. That's why this one is full and I need to upgrade this. I got a terabyte hard drive. I'm going to swap out with a terabyte, clone everything over to that one and, and put it on there. But um, anyway, this is where the downloads go. Now, with the downloads, what I would do if I was you for everything you download, create a folder. Create a folder that it goes to because when you start to download something, it's going to ask you where do you want to save it. So at this point, you can you can have subfolders in here that specifies what it is. If you download a program, put it in programs, programs only. In that way, if you need that program again, you can find it because in it's in that fo folder. And I think I have this one somewhat categorized like that. Uh, nope, I don't. I only got it for like plugins because, okay, I know why, because I cleared everything out. I went through and cleaned the drive out. There was a lot more stuff in it to that. But anyway, create subfolders inside your downloads, 
put a folder called new music. So whenever you go into your record pools, everything goes into new music. And then from there, you transfer it over to whatever folders that you have here. That's, that's my method that I would do as for organizing. Then once you once you download it, if it needs to go into the trap that you have here in this area, like if you have trap here, then that's where it's going to go. If you got something that needs to go into this folder, it goes there and so forth. So um, that way you're a little bit more organized and you don't have stuff that's just like scattered everywhere. Just like here, I have music that I haven't unzipped yet. But like I said, I don't really I haven't put any a lot of music on here because I wasn't for sure that I was going to use them for Serato. But today yep it's gonna be some music i'm gonna have it's gonna be its own drive i'm gonna have its own drive just for music just like this one just like this backup this is the external drive the seagate external drive that i have connected now and like i said it was it's full that's why i had problems they only got like seven gigs left but like i say it send it to where it needs to go if you're doing a download then send it to downloads. Don't have your downloads going. If you have a Word document, don't have it downloaded to document first. Let it go to downloads, and then if you need to transfer it from there, then put it in documents. Uh, and it, then that way, say if you just download it, but you're not going to use it at that time, then you know where to find it. And especially if you just copy it, if you're just making a copy, then you know where to find the original download. So um, you want to do that with music or that's the method that I use with music is that I download everything here. I would create a folder and separate because every time you download from a specific program, it's going to be it's going to go into a specific program. So that's where you want to go with that. And well, that's that's my take on that. I do music photos everything documents to where there's a subfolder inside download that it goes into so I can find it whenever I need it. And so that I would say the organization with crates once once you start at um once you start to get overwhelmed like if you start download stuff and you don't keep it consistent then you, you're in a uh, area where you are at the next step and that ends organization. Let's go to the next one, which is management of your crates. Now you're at a point where all your music is scattered. You, you you've downloaded stuff. You didn't save it in a specific location. You you have stuff that's in you have tons of stuff that's on your desktop. You have stuff that's in pictures. You have karaoke files or video music files that you saved in videos. So now you're kind of unorganized. And this is the same thing with organization, but now you've let it go on out of control. You may want to take some time and go through and and re get re, re have, restructure, restructure everything. Go through take all your karaoke that's in videos and your music videos and you want to do it in bulk. You may even want to create a folder inside of that just so you can get that cleared out. So say for instance, you have karaoke that's not in folders. Let's just say you have karaoke that, that looks similar like to the zip files that I had. That's, and that's what I want to use. These are all karaoke. Say if you have this in your videos and then you also have music files that that's listed then you have a folder that says music videos so i would create either that video that that folder that you have or better yet i would just create a folder create a folder put it in all caps when i have stuff in all caps that catches my attention more than stuff that has first letter cap all lowercase so Put it in caps that will significant, significant, significant. 
that will basically tell you, and I can't get the word out. That will tell you, that will tell you that that folder is important. So take everything, take all your karaoke files, copy all your karaoke files into there. Take your, um, take your music that's not in folders, put it in there and then take your music files, your music videos that's in folders, put it in there. So now you got everything that's in your, um, in your video folder that doesn't belong in your video folder to move, to move to somewhere else. Because the reason that, the reason I said don't specify, don't put uh, music videos and music videos and karaoke in your video folder is because they are not actually videos. They're not videos that you'll be using for that purpose. Now, if you do uh, edits like in iMovie, Filmora, Vegas, um, uh, Illustrator, well, I can't remember what the Adobe one for video is. Well, say if you're using a video editor to do videos, then you're also going to have that in there too. And you want to specify the two because your karaoke and music videos are used with music. So put them in the category that they're, they're used with because they are actually more music files than they are video files. So categorize them differently. Put them, cluster them all together before you get them out of there and then take that cluster and walk their ass right on over to music. And do the same thing with everything else, but this is what I want to specify about uh, music and moving stuff around. So uh, that's it for Management Crate. Like I said, the, the, the last two was going to be the shortest. Uh, let's see, what else do I have left? Because I don't know for sure whether I left anything out. And I lost my cursor again. There we go. Just saw you. All right. So uh, that's it. And the last step is troubleshoot. And this is where I wanted people to get questions. This, this is where I want questions on troubleshoot because I can't recall all the steps that or issues that people used to have with troubleshooting. So as far as I know, as for troubleshooting issues that people used to have, what people that currently have now is that, and I still haven't figured this out myself, but um, I had wanted to go through and try a couple things, is that when you're analyzing music and you shut down, you come back and it still, it still haven't changed. And I've had that to happen a couple times too. So let's, let, let me try this. And I think what you want to do, you want to make sure that you have you select. Yes, that you want to quit that or that you want to. Um, yes, that you're leaving and make sure that you are backing up and also make sure your protect files is on. That's the only thing that I can think of as for when you're. Um, when you're leaving, when you're shutting down that it it uh everything is safe so all right let's do because i finished i'm gonna try to return to the dj since it's the newest one and see right there it didn't save all right so i'm a, since it's real quick and i mean like shit real quick so i'm gonna go ahead and let that finish let it run a second time because the thing is, I have not saved the process. It has not. I have not left out and saved it to the point where it can be saved. But here it is. I'm going to let it finish out. And there it's finished. Uh, what happens if I click it again? OK, I still got to drag and drop it. So now I'm going to escape out. Of Serato. And I'm going to make sure backup library on exit is saved. All right, and it's gonna save this backup. Well, nope, it's saying the backup on 
Serato music backup on my external drive is over a week old. Do I want to update it? Yes, I do want to update it. All right, so it's backing up and something is happening. Uh, I'm going to let it. Because you may have this to happen time to time, including on Mac now, including on Mac 2 now, because it, it can happen on Mac 2. Serato uses up a lot of resource. If I go through and. I'm going to open up my I'm open up my task manager. I don't want to I want to wait. So right now, look at the process that's running. It's running about five gig of memory. That's why you always you want to have it. No, nope, that's not Serato. This is Serato. OK. And it's not responding. That's OK. That's Chrome. My bad. Yep, Chrome would use up. And it's giving me a not responding again. Let's see right here is probably this is probably where it's going to crash on me. And it did. All right, open it back up. Hey, Eric, you still here? I can't tell who's here. Guess what I got? All I'm just going to say is my middle son, Cameron, got them for me. I'm not going to say how, because then I have to go upstairs and, and beat his ass for what happened. But no, I just let it be a learning lesson and let it slide. I'll take it. So waiting for. All right, so right old open and get me a little snack while it does. And when it opens up, and it's about to open now. All right, scan the library and just that quick it's done. All right, so let's go back to my return to the DJ folder. And where is it? You see, that's the thing, it didn't save. Oh, there it is. It's at the top. All right. Let's see if it saved the analyze, which I'm yep, sure it didn't, but All right, it's done. I'm just gonna go out and quit because that's the only process that I wanted to do. I hit the escape key.
like, oh, yep, I don't have the backup. So let me go out and make sure. Okay, protect library. Let's check. Let's go out again. Yes. Now, at this point, it's saving everything. It should be saving. And I wanted to show the process that task managers were having. All right, let's go. All right, it's open. It opens up on another screen, so I have to minimize it and drag it up, and then maximize it. And it still didn't save. Now, I think this is an ongoing problem that has probably never really been fixed. I mean, because I think now some of the stuff has been saved. Like if I go through and try to, if I click analyze all entire library, it's not going to do everything. Oh, ah. Uh, Yep, that is everything. Well, let's try this. Let's see. I'm going to stop it and redo it again and see if it stops where it left off or if it Fifty-one, fifty-one, three sixty-four. Let it do about a hundred. Okay, so it's saving some of it. Now the thing is, and I think this is gonna happen right here, or is running into an issue right here. One, one thing that you're gonna have to happen when you're analyzing, if you have a bad file, a lot of people say if you download YouTube stuff, this will most likely to happen. If you're downloading, a corrupt or well, no, it's not even downloading. If you are analyzing a bad file, say it's is corrupted, it has a glitch in it, it will cause this to to crash. So, say if I go to bed right now, if I go to bed right now and leave this running, and I get back and it's done, but then I say, okay, let me recheck. I run to reanalyze again and it starts analyzing maybe the first two files and then it crashes. That is an indication that you have a bad file that you need to find and that you need to need to remove from the system. So what you want to do there, you want to run analyze again and usually it, it will cause the whole program to crash. You have to restart the program 
and start over again. When you start analyzing, notice what tracks are being scanned and what portion that they're scanned. You may be able to get past when you get to the read point and it starts to write. That's where the issue will take place because it's not able to do what this process wants it to do. So you need to find it at that point. Stop it from analyzing. And find it. If you can't find it here. Or let's say if you do find it here, then go to your drop box, go to your drop right here, change it to location like I have it right here and find out exactly what hard drive that is on and remove it because that's going to give you problems. What you can probably do is you can listen to it once you find it here, open it and then play it. And if it is something with the corrupt, you're going to hear it. If there's a glitch, if there's a um, some type of disruption in the track, it's going to cause an issue. OK, now. There's another issue. And this is the last trouble step, troubleshooting step that I mentioned, because I hear heard of this a lot as well where people have issues where um, the database get, get corrupt. And let me show you what you need to do there. When you have an issue where you have a lot of stuff that's going on, you go, and if I remember right, I think you go into either going to Finder or Explore, and it is in your underscore folder. So I am going to music. And in, on the Mac, you will go to whatever your drive is called. Um, users. Uh, users, your home, your home folder name and then music. But for here, I'm going into my music or music and then I have Serato here and the folder that you are looking for is there it is right here your database and if I remember right uh, I think what you do you delete it and let me make sure Uh, let me see. And this is the issue if you have. Um, uh, where is it? I'm looking on Serato site for it now. Database, 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 database. type it in. Okay. 
So I'm about halfway through. Open up your Serato. Create a new create. And name it whatever. Okay, that's name create four. Click on all crates at the top of your crate. Go main library, control A. Okay, so what it's telling you to do, you're taking your all and you're backing it up. You're copying it into that crate. So, all right, let's rename this. Let me do that. Probably because I got protect crates on tech library. Okay, there we go. So let's say if I name this echo all again. Make sure that I leave this unchecked. All and I'm going to select everything. All 5,000, 5 million or however many songs that I got. 51,000. And copy it here. Okay, so now I got a copy. Yeah, let's make sure. 51364. And it won't show me there. I forgot. It won't show your total count. But that's what that's what I got based on what I analyzed. So that being said, then it says close Serato. And if you're on PC, open Explorer. And then we're going to. Where's my folder? at? And we're going to my music and we're going to the Serato underscore. And I think we're about to delete something. And there you'll see your database V2, which is this file. And you want to rename it. So basically, I think what happens when you rename it, you take it out. You you take it out of circulation and when you take it out of circulation, because you're going to have this closed, once you open it back up, all this is gone for the all. So all this is gone. And then you're probably going to take all this and copy it back into here. Like I said, I've never tried it, but I've told I recommended people to do this. So you're naming your backup. You're naming your database V2 to database underscore V2 backup in case you need to restore it. Um, if you have any, 
partitions or external hard drives, there would be a folder on these called underscore Serato underscore, which also contains database V2. Repeat this. So you would need to do this on every drive that you have as a backup so that it's accurate, that it's, it's the same, especially if you have an issue open. Then after that, you reopen your Serato as you have renamed, renamed your original. OK, because you renamed your your original to backup. So it's not going to see anything. Serato is going to create a new database underscore V2 file. Your Serato won't be able to find it. So, yep, and it will create a new one. It will populate it with all the tracks. It will populate it with all the tracks that are in your crate as we create a crate as we create it a crate earlier containing your files these will be added to okay reanalyze ooh, reanalyze your library already if you already reanalyze your li library if you already set bpm key you can turn off the option for the settings for setting these vi the anal Analyze settings, drop down to avoid any unwanted changes. Voila, voila, you have now new clean uninterrupted database. You can now delete the backup by selecting it, pressing control out delete. Okay. This is what that step does in case that your your database get corrupted. And say for instance, you can't you can't find you, you open it op, open up your Serato. Either your crates are not there or your files are not there. Create a new database. And what you do, create a backup folder. Copy whatever you have to that folder. Copy all the tracks, copy all the tracks here to there. That is your backup for this in case this step does not go right. Shut down Serato. Leave Serato closed this whole time until I mention so. Then go into your actual Serato folder here by going through music. And of course, it's going to be different from Mac, but going through music and then finding this right here. This right here creates this. Creates your crates and creates your um it creates all the information for it. If you were to open it, I think if you were to open it up like in text or something like that, it will probably show the information needed to create your crates. But anyway. You're backing this up, too. So instead of creating a folder, because actually what you can do, you can. Um, you could probably move this, move it to something. You can probably move it to desktop and it will do just the same. But here they're saying name it backup. Just change it and just do. Backup. But you don't want to not going to do that because that ain't what I need to do right now. I don't need to change it. Unless I want to start over fresh. Which I can do it over here on this Mac. So that's what you want to do. You change that and reopen, reopen Serato and it will it will do a brand new database. You know, for kicks, I'm just going to try it. Hey, what can I lose? All right, so I already done this. And make sure I go back here, protect, and now escape.
And when that closes, we're going to go to the next step. All right, so that's done. ANC is making changes right now. Got activity that's going on in here. Something's going on. I don't know what's going on. Something's going on. So to make sure this one doesn't read when I reopen it. And if this, if this doesn't work, you can always go back and rename it to the original. But that's it. Back up. And when I come back to it, it's going to create a new one. There's going to be a new one either above or below this. That new one is going to be based on what it creates when I open Serato back up. So now I'm about to open Serato up. And I may not be able to move it up fast enough. It's opening now, but it's all a dark screen. And I can't drag it. It won't let me drag and open it until it's done. But it looks like everything is there. Now, all these yellow files, these are files that are missing. And I think they're missing because I don't know they're not on this drive. So let's verify that complete crates. Let's move it somewhere where I can stretch it. So now if I try to play this, that's what happens. This track could not be found here. Blah, 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 blah. So, so location. Uh, let's go and try the relocate and see if it can find it. While it's doing that, I already got it highlighted. So click. So I'm going to try to find it manually. Complete crate, completed crates. August music. Okay, I must have moved that because I do not have August music week on here. So wait. August music week. August music week two. I found it, but it's not in that location. And as you can see, right here it's saying it's in completed crates. What I did, I took it out of completed crates and put it in the same location that completed crates is. So there is no completed crates. But I still need to find out if it's here. It's disco freeze. It 
And there it is right there. It's one of these tracks. Yep, it's one of those. And now Serato's having the time trying to find it. But actually manually I found it. If I um if I take that and let's do that. I'm going to take August week and put it back in to complete it. And the reason why is all the stuff that's in brackets and it has something around it is temporarily like platinum notes. Those are those are files that I ran in platinum notes. So after it's been ran to platinum notes, it saves there. Then I go back and overwrite the originals with the platinum notes version. So I don't have somewhat of a duplicate. And the duplicate being one that's been through platinum notes and one that hasn't been through platinum notes. So this is basically a management issue where I need to go up and clean out a lot of stuff but in some cases, like these three, these three folders right here are like temporary stuff. These are not like my main folders. This is, these are folders where I need to go through, like completed crates. That's completed stuff. Actually, everything should be incompleted and everything here should be read through completed, but I didn't set it up that way. I set it up to where I could do completed crates. And then when I'm done, or actually, no, that completed crates is what is done. At this point now, acapellas, when they're completed, they're going to go here, uh, which I think I have some already. I don't think they're clones. Oh, well, I'm hoping they're not clones. All right, let's go back. Classic hip hop Motown. So my acapellas here should not be clone. Which I think I only did like a partial. I got tired and then just moved on. Or them did get me, you know, that's what happens. I didn't finish. So I have two acapellas. I have some that I finished tagging and editing and stuff. And then I have some that I didn't. This is anything that's not in that completed is, well, that's it. It's not completed. So that's management that I have to do right there. But that's it. And I've gone four hours, so I got a lot of shit to edit. Well, that's about it. Anybody have any questions before I wrap this mug up? Because I did not expect it to be this long. I mean, some of it I did that was short. But some of it I did that was really too long. I guess because I had to jump in into Wendell's and explain it to. 
like I said, I'm editing everything. I got my laptop over here beside me. And I got stuff that's any silent pieces is being edited out of it. So if y'all are if if y'all don't have any questions, I'm about to go ahead and close this out because um, I want to get back to testing the sound for this coming weekend. That's what I'm about to work on next while I got um, stuff over here running. So um, that's it. I'm done, y'all. Finally. And this this segment right here is Serato Music and Crates Setup Organization Management Troubleshoot, etc. And I hope that somebody has picked up something out of this that they can use any tips and techniques out of it. Like I said, I'm going to after this is over, I'll probably immediately break this up to where you can jump to the points. Um, where. Um, where I broke everything up and even when I jump back to Windows, I'm going to go back and redo that too that's why i use the banner so i can find it real easily but uh yeah that is about it and i don't have any questions but all right y'all i'm gonna wish you good night i will see you later this is ken ellis atlanta dj zone tech tuesday live uh next week three part three or step three I'll be going over the actual control panel and the transport for Serato in both um, single plate mode and in hardware mode. So make sure y'all tune in. It's going to be something that you don't want to miss. Hope everybody have a great night. Stay safe. Mask up, social distancing, six feet, wash your hands, sanitize, all that good stuff. I'll catch you again next week. We out. Peace.